Hospital. Artifacts stolen from the Palace of the Oba of Benin, typically bronze tusks, wood carvings, and the Benin moat, are at the center of an agitation that will see them return to the land of their creation. The agitation is coming on the heels of the Black Lives Matter movement, and Benins are demanding more than ever for the return of the artifacts, which were looted as punishment for the gallantry displayed by Oba Ovarame, Nogbaisi's warriors, who resisted British invaders before the eventual fall of the kingdom in 1897. Paul Ezenwa has details in this report. In the height of its power around the 16th century, the Bini Kingdom was an epic center of global civilization. Located at the northmost part of what is presently southern Nigeria, the Bini Kingdom led the world in a variety of frontiers, including the artistic and scientific fields. But all that changed when colonial invaders made inroad into Africa. An epoch that interrupted a process many scholars believe would have seen African kingdoms evolve naturally into world superpowers. The brazen theft of artworks, which were at the heart of Benin civilization, would become a sore point of colonial legacy. Their singular artistic distinction, which had made them a subject of tourist appeal for early Dutch, French, and Portuguese visitors became the same irresistible factor for why they were so massively looted. They met and carted away these objects to Europe. And when these objects got to Europe, the Europeans then couldn't believe that we, Benins, produced these objects. Because prior to that time, they had this uh, preconceived prejudice that we were living on trees, we lacked culture, we were brutish, and the like. And here we were, people that they, 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 they are called cannibals and are producing these beautiful pieces. So much so that they compared them to the classical objects of Rome. So where I'm going is, if they saw those objects as exquisite then, when they arrived in Europe, which meant that for centuries, the objects were preserved to have been reckoned as classical objects. We were able to preserve them for centuries. In recent times, the adoption of Queen Idia's image as the mascot for the 1977 Festival of Black Arts, which was held during the reign of Oba Akenzoa, heightened the black consciousness and gave even greater credence to the quest for the restitution of stolen artworks. Support provided by the federal and Edo state government have boosted the ranks of cultural activists in the forefront of the struggle for the return of the looted artifacts. According to Bini Custom, the monarch is the legitimate custodian and owner of all such artifacts. The carvers may just come to the Oba and offer to produce a photograph of him. And uh, this grew, and every Oba decides to do something of himself. He brings it to the carve, and uh, so uh, we have, we have. Uh, a saying in Bini Oba go badia, that is no Oba stays as a houseboy to another Oba. So in the palace now, we have Ugai Oba, that is the, where the Oba's parents stay. The parents now are the artifacts, the, 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 carv, the carvings and the carved heads of Obas. Now, in the good old days, a carver might come have this oba, he puts it in, in, in one place. When the, ob, the next oba comes, because the other one has done it, he carves one, he, he pr produces a small room for it, and, and, and he puts his own there. The one in Bini, as I know it, uh, uh, belongs to the oba of Bini, and then when the British, when the people were coming here, the Portuguese were coming here, they found it with us. And they said that the Portuguese, would be, when they came, much material they wanted in Benin to make the bronze begin uh, cheaper because of the material they were bringing from uh, Europe. So that, that's why you see that uh, most of the uh, artifacts made at that time, they are all 15 centuries when the uh, Portuguese people were here. Today, 
as the heat of the agitation continues, several European cities have been identified as where stolen artifacts can be found. They include the US, Britain, France, Latin America, Germany, as with private collectors in as far as Russia. It was a pictorial something to us, and that the design, that is very historical. People use it to talk. They say, this is the other, this is the other, this is the other, or this is the queen, this is the queen. Then we have no photograph. And we, that's why I find, find it. Almost all museums in the world have, have them, not only Germany. As a way to demonstrate how important the retrieval of stolen artifacts are to both the people and the state, the Edo State Government under Governor Gordon Obaseke has announced plans to embark on a 450 million naira Bini Royal Museum, which will help house all returned looted artifacts starting from 2022. We need to be reconnected to our past. We need to be restituted for some of these works that left home. However, we understand that this has to be a collaborative effort. And we've worked in with partners, particularly most European museums. We have now agreed to build the Edo Museum of West African Arts. And quite a lot of work has gone into it. There are a lot of commitments from people who want to return works. But the pavilion is also going to be a research centre. Um, there's going to be a bit more archaeological works that are being done um, on, you know, to find out what, you know, find out more about the our culture. And we are looking forward to talk to all Nigerian stakeholders and to find a common approach between Nigeria and the Federal Republic of Germany to support the efforts of the National Commission of Monuments, the federal government the Legacy and Restoration Trust and the Royal Court of Benin in order to support effectively the Nigerian efforts to build up a museum for the 21st century here in Benin which would honor the tradition and path the way for a better future. To sustain the artwork, a new system of training on craftsmanship and modern skills has to be in place. Bronze artwork could be more utilitarian and made more cheaply, so as to popularize an ancient art which served the Benin monarchs in time past, but which could fire the artistic talent and imaginations of Benins today, thereby making Benin art more conventional, widespread, and expand the influence and impact of Benin culture. So what, what I'm doing exactly is engraving, so trying to put some designs, you know, the scale of the, the feather of the cock. You know, so that's exactly what I'm doing now. And uh, this work is, uh, is hereditary. We, I was born inside, you know, born and brought up inside. When Oba is having any, you know, ceremony, so Igun, bronze casters will be invited. As you have the modern day camera or pressman. So we'll sit down quietly and watch the events. After capturing the events with our eyes and stored in our brain, then we'll go back to the studio and replicate. Then after which we'll, we'll send it back to the other. Because it was a court art, or rather palace art. So it's not an individual individual thing. It's only the other that directs what will happen in, ter in terms of uh, bronze casting. In this connection, the Edo State government is working with the Nigerian ambassador to Germany to press the German government to return the priceless object. And we are here to testify the joint willingness of four federal states in Germany, of the federal government and of five museums holders of Benin bronzes to proceed to a restoration of those objects to Nigeria. Nearly 300 years after some of these objects were stolen, Germany has promised to return these looted treasures in 2022. Also, 900 of these artifacts housed in British Museum will soon be on permanent display in Benin City. Paul Ezenwa, TVC News, Benin.